some technology is also very confusing for me. <laughs> Hopefully, everything goes well. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so the screen share is okay, right? Yep, yep. Yeah, yeah, great. So maybe then, yeah. Right. yeah should, should I start? Should you really the order? Um, you know, please go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. So sorry for the delay. Today, so uh, we are welcome to have um our speaker Wu Chuan Li from Michigan, who is going to talk to us about computing homology groups of TMF by equivariant and multiplicative techniques. Take it away. Yeah. yeah. Uh, thank you for the uh, invitation. Yeah, it's really my pleasure uh, to speak here. And uh, so, yeah, so the, the goal is trying to give some uh, computations of the home to big groups of the topological module forms, which is known. Um, but the point is trying to um, provide some new techniques from the recently developed uh, uh, equivariant and the motivic techniques. Um, and uh, on, on one thing is like the the original proof, the original computations use a lot of non-trivial topological informations. It involves total brackets, which I'll see in uh, in later. Uh, and uh, so the equivalent method like totally avoid using any total brackets. Uh, so it's more algebraic. And also it gives new information. Uh, for example, so the equivalent one can you can in, uh, upgrade the grading uh, and also for the motivic one, like it helps to settle down a ring structure, assign the ring structure. Um, yeah, so that's an uh, advertisement. Uh, so maybe now uh, let me start the talk with uh, some motivations. And uh, as you can imagine, this is a, a talk about computation. So I'm trying to motivate the project module forms by uh, the computational side. So like, sorry, like if you're expecting something exciting about the modular forms and uh, like weight and genius, uh, sorry for that, it may not be up here in the talk, but they're definitely beautiful series. Um, so uh, let me just mot motivate from uh, like a warm up example. Uh, for the warm up one, uh, let's just think about the uh, computation. Like not about the home to be groups for TMF, but let's just start from the uh, topological K theory, the real K theory KO. Uh, and also, again, this is also known. This is known by uh, Bout. Uh, Bout already knows uh, about periodicity theorem. And uh, so, in particular, uh, the complex one uh, tells you that the complex K theory is too periodic. And uh, the home to be groups is uh, a copy of Z or trivial. Alternatively, this is uh, even and this is odd. And uh, for the real version, you've got the one for the real K theory KO, and uh, it's eight periodic. So modular eight. You've got the home to be groups. Yeah. Oh. And uh, so this was originally proved by Bout that using the Morse theorem. And uh, in that in that way, uh, like the computation for the real one is much harder than the complex one, as you can imagine, because it's already a periodic and the groups look slightly more complicated. Uh, as you can imagine, you use more theorem, and then like there are more cells, and uh, it's harder uh, relations. Uh, so maybe uh, now I want to advertise a way that which will appear later uh, in the computation that related to the equivalent method. Uh, so I will regard this one, the real K theory K KO, as a C2 fixed point of KU. And uh, I'm doing the, con the periodic version not the connective one. So in this case, it has the even better one. And this one is, I can forget about the genuine equivalent home to be theory. This is just for real, like in the sense, the fixed point and the home to be fixed point agree with each other for the periodic version. Uh, so then uh, as you can imagine for the computations, 
uh, maybe uh, sooner or later you will run into spectral sequence computations. Like if you really wanna compute uh, something maybe slightly harder. Uh, so in this case, since I already interpret the real case theory as the home to fixed point of something known, uh, so then maybe a default method is just use the home to p fixed points for sequences. And uh, just as the name suggests, it starts with X with the G action. Um, then like I can imagine this one as a genuine uh, G spectra by just the co-free uh, co construction, uh, thinking of the Borel theory of it. And the spectral sequence allows me to compute uh, the home to be fixed point, the, the home to be groups of the uh, stable home of the, home to be fixed points of X, starting with the information, uh, knowing the home to be groups of X. And now this one is knowing it as a G module. Because X has a G action, the action induces uh, action on the home to be groups. Um, and uh, so then with this information, uh, like I can run a spectral sequence, there will be differentials. If I'm using Adam's grading, then, I will use t minus s as x axis as s as a filtration to be the y axis, uh, and the differentials goes left by one and up by the length of the differential r. Uh, so this is just ju the general setup. Uh, maybe um, like if the first time you see it, this may not make much more sense, but I think the pictures will uh, tells you more. Uh, so maybe let's just do the quick example. Seeing using this one, you can. Um, compute the real bulk periodicity from the complex one uh, fairly easily. Uh, so like we say, uh, our X is KU uh, and uh, our group G is C2 in our case. And then uh, X HC2 is just KO in this case. Uh, so I can run the spiral sequence. So let's see what do I need to start with the uh, uh, E2 page. This is a starting point, it's a left, there's an arrow, so we are going from left to the right. Uh, so the left-hand side, I know the pi are of KU. Let me just write it, because KU is a ring spectrum, it's better than just like knowing it's, it's a copy of Z in even dimension, but you can even make it into a ring. So the home topic groups uh, form a ring uh, with a generator uh, in degree minus two or two, doesn't matter since the uh, periodic version like U is inverted. And uh, as we said, you want to know the action of C2 and uh, it acts by only on U and uh, change U to minus U and trivially on the coefficient Z. So this can be, um, you can work this out, like this boils all boils down to the C2 action. It's just a complex conjugation. Uh, so once you, you believe this fact, then you are ready to go. So you can compute it. The left hand side, you see, uh, I already know pi star of KU is such as a copy of Z with a trivial action. If the dimension is 4K and if 4K plus two uh, is a Z, but with a, a sign representation. So it changed the one to minus one. So let me just denote a sigma for the sign representation. So then you can just compute the group homology so like I draw this one in at once. So this is an E2 page. If I'm trying to put T and S, S here and S here, uh, maybe just like to convince yourself, uh, maybe let's just think about the trivial case in a dimension 4K. So notice this 4K is coming from the star and this is T. Uh, so remember this uh, setup is here. Uh, T is coming from here and here. So T is 4K. So let's just take t equals four. And then I got a copy of a trivial representation. Then the group cohomology will just agree with the group cohomology for RP infinity, since the classified space for C2 is RP infinity. So like you can recall, like maybe uh, the for the one well, you know, then it's a Z and, th and trivial and Z2 and the zero and the trivial and the going up on the, on the cohomology degree. 
So this is a commodity degree S. So then I can take T equals four, S equals zero. That should give me a copy of Z. And that's here. And I'm going up since my degree is T minus S and S. So by increasing S, I'm going diagonally negative slope one. So I read a copy of Z and the trivial and the copy of Z mod two trivial uh, and here, oh yeah, this line is uh, slightly off, sorry. Yeah, because here is a minus four. This minus one, two, three, four, yeah. Uh, and now then uh, you see another copy of Z mod two, a black dot here. So that's one way to imagine like the picture maybe is right, at least like for the 4K part is good. So you can try by yourself for the uh, the other case. Uh, so then I just use a black box for a copy of Z, a dot for a copy of Z mod two, and the rest part is just trivial. Uh, okay, yeah, so maybe any questions so far? You just feel free to uh, stop me anytime. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Uh, great. Yeah. So maybe uh, then, like, once you believe the E two page, this is a starting point, and uh, uh, the differential, uh, they all going from, you see the x axis going down by one and going up by r. So it's from from D two, but there's no room for any D two, uh, because for example. Uh, for you, you're starting from any dots and then you go uh, left by one and you go up by two, you end up with something just trivial. There's nothing for, there's no room for D2. And then the next one is D3 and there are some rooms for D3. There's a possible D3 like this one, okay, going by one, by three, and here, and here, and so on. Um, and it turns out uh, these are the D3s, like the, the tower, like this tower will kill this tower and uh, similarly this tower will kill, kill this tower and it repeats. Uh, so like then the, the computation, uh, well here you need some fact for logical information to force this D3. So there are two steps, like number one, uh, you see this D3 and number two, you use uh, multiplicative structures and uh, since they're called differentials, so they satisfy the Leibniz rule. And uh, by the multiplic multiplicative structures, you can show the rest D3 uh, as indicated. Uh, so there are many different ways to show this, this one D3, but it involves uh, topological information. And uh, maybe one way to show this one uh, is, uh, for example, like you know, you happen to know that uh, in the KO, in the algebra K theory, it detects the first half element eta, uh, and it's detect eta in here. Uh, is there a question? No. Uh, okay, yeah. So like in the sphere, eta to the power four equals zero. This is even in the stable homotopy group of sphere. Once you compute the E2 page for Adam's per sequence, you see the you see this property, then you know the eta to the power of four has to be zero here, since it's a module over pi star of s. So this guy has to die, and so it's either killed by this guy or kill something else. But since eta is a is a permanent cycle, survives, and this one is eta to some power, it cannot support a differential. So the only way for it to disappear in this picture is it's killed by another differential. And uh, and there's just nothing in this column next to it other than this point. So the D3 has to happen. So, but this is a little example seeing uh, you, you first need to know some non-trivial geometric facts and then you play with the structure of the uh, spatial sequences to force the differential. And basically you are computing the boundary map in the log exact sequences, and then you organize uh, the final answer. So maybe in this case, uh, if you believe this D3, then everything uh, here, here, uh, they all gone. And what's left over is only these three dots. And this copy of 
this is a copy of Z. After killing a Z mod two is kill a copy of Z, and this is left over. So you you read from the left over is a copy of Z, uh, and uh, it's Z mod two. Z mod two. There's a dot and trivial, trivial, nothing left. Oh, sorry, here is a copy of Z, and the trivial, trivial, trivial copy of Z, and so on. So that's a real about periodicity from the complex one. Uh, once you believe this spectral sequence computation. Okay. Uh, and uh, so uh, why does the story con like is something related to the topic? Uh, this is about the chromatic complexity theory. Uh, so maybe uh, let me just uh, modif modify it from the computational side. Uh, like the, this is a stable homotopy group of sphere for the first few stems. If you just see the answer, like for the first 16 stems, then pretty pretty much this is just a chaos and uh, uh, like like it's hard to say anything uh, like in, in any pattern in here. So however, uh, like Adam studied the G homeomorphism. Yeah, so maybe let me change the template. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the J homeomorphism is a map from the home to be groups of the orthogonal Lie group to the stable home to be groups of sphere in the same dimension. And uh, there's a geometric construction, it goes back all the way to bad height. Uh, and the point is, about periodicity already tells you. Um, what the home to be groups looks on the left hand side. So by thinking of the image of this map, you already know part of the home to be groups of sphere. If you can figure out the image, uh, and then Adams shows that uh, the image can be figured out. And uh, maybe let me just show the answer. So this is a image of J from the J homeomorphism. And uh, so the, the key point is uh, on top is the eight periodicity computation we just finished. So it's very periodic, there's a pattern. And uh, well, the image of J can be computed. So secretly, there is uh, some eight periodic pattern in the home to be group of sphere, which is very hard to see from the first side. Uh, and uh, so the way Adams determine the image of J Follows from the following information. It started. It studies uh, the theory, the complex K theory. So it studies this two periodic guy. This is two periodic and generalized commodity theory, and together with the Adams operations on it. Originally, this one is related to vector bundles and uh, Adam's operations is defined by tensor on the line bundles. Uh, so there is an operation and this is a two information, uh, like a, a generalized commodity theory together with the action. Uh, this together determines the image of J, which tells you part of the home to be group of sphere. But from the table, you see uh, you didn't get everything. Like for, for example, here you, you already miss a lot of information from the home group of sphere. And maybe uh, like a question you may hope is, can we understand the whole group like using similar approach? And, and the answer is yes, at least by the chromatic home to theory, theoretically, although computationally, maybe it's still very far away from knowing the uh, entire answer, uh, but the chromatic home to theory generalize the, the story of image of J above by the following way. So like the chromatic is a word like borrow, borrow, borrowed from the physics. So it's a, the original meaning is colors. So in physics, if you have a prism and you let the natural light goes in through it, you will see a rainbow. And uh, 
So you will have a lot of different colors with different priorities, um, and you can study them one by one. And uh, the chromatic home th theory, like in short, like in a cartoon uh, way to introduce it, is you start with some stable homotopy theory. So for example, the stable homotopy group of sphere is quite complicated. You threw in this uh, black box, chromatic homotopy theory. Let's take this as black box. And uh, it spell out like periodic layers. And these layers indexed by a natural number called height. And uh, when this is zero, then this is just rational home to be theory. And uh, when n equals one, this gives the image of J. And uh, when n equals two uh, and the higher, uh, it gives all the way to all the natural numbers. And if you go through this tower, you collect all the information, you will recover the whole group. In the like our topological module forms uh, will lie in the second layer, and uh, at the generalization of the place the row of the real case theory K O in the uh, height one case. So maybe let me be more slightly more precise. Say what does the black box give us? The black box for the chromatic homo theory gives the following thing. Uh, so the machine gives let's fix a prime. And uh, so in this talk, let's just fix the prime to be two all the time, the prime two. Uh, and uh, so for for given height, n, uh, the chromatic home home theory provides you exactly the same information Adams use to knowing the image of J. So that's the first part. You need a commodity theory. That's a Moran E theory or the Lubin Tate theory. So with the feature, this is too periodic. Together with the operation, and this time it's acting by the Morava stabilizer group. And uh, when n equals one, this Morava E theory is just com a two completed version of complex K theory. And uh, this G1 is just a uh, units in the two adic sphere, which is a two, sorry, two adic integers, which is a two completed version of the Adams operation. So you see the, when n equals one, this exactly recovers story. And uh, just as Adams did, so if you think about the fixed point under home to be fixed point under this group action, this one determines the image of J part. And now, I, now what does the black box give you is okay. So now for any n, I got an en, I got a gn. If I can compute. Uh, the home to fixed point E of G N, then uh, I will collect the information for the nth layer, and I can just assemble all of them properly to recover the whole uh, group. Uh, so that's a picture. And uh, so in the head one case, you will see in this group, this is D2 cross, and the inside it, uh, there is a plus minus one, which is a group of order, uh, cyclic group of order two. And uh, that's a complex conjugation. And uh, as a consequence, if I'm taking the subgroup, the fixed point gives me the real K theory. And this can be interpreted as the first approximation from the complex K theory, uh, KU, which you know the home topic groups, like to the sphere. Like you first go to not taking the fixed point by the whole group, just by the finite subgroup there. Uh, and that give you something uh, non-trivial, give you the real about periodicity theorem. And now, like in the high two case, so I got 
e2 and acting by g2. And starting, and I'm, I want to mimic the same thing. Like I'm now going all the way to the whole group, but let me just go in through to the maximal finite subgroup. And in here, the maximal finite group is a group of order 48. And uh, if I'm taking the home to be fixed point for this for this guy, uh, this will be the one of the K2 local version of the topological module forms. Uh, but maybe uh, let me also write down the definition for the topological module forms uh, in the usual way. And uh, but like the in the talk, like the like this definition will be the starting point. Uh, oh, oh yeah, so I write it in, in advance. So so like for the for the for the next part, there are a lot of definitions. Uh, like maybe I may not be able to go into details uh, to explain all all of them. Uh, so the whole point is this one is a K two local version of the topological model forms, which is originally constructed at the global section of some derived schemes. So you think of the uh, stack, think of the modular stack of the stable elliptic curves, and then uh, it. It has been proven there is a shift of community green spectra over it, which means over each point, there is a community green spectra which presents a cohomology theory. Um, and then you take the global section, you will end up with the topological row forms, and the connective cover is usually denoted as a small TMF. And so, so this is a quick definition. And just as I said, at the beginning of the talk, I'm really sorry that if you're interested in this part, uh, I will just rush rush through it and uh, skip this part to the and jump into the computation for the homotopy groups of it. Uh, so maybe let me pause here. Uh, like any questions or comments? Okay, great. If you are all excited about the uh, computation, then uh, as you can imagine, okay. Uh, now I'm in the setup. So the case is very similar to the E1 HC2 computation to compute KO, like the two complete KO. Uh, so here I just want to go starting from E2 and computing the home topic groups of topological model forms, the K2 localized version, a, local, a localized version for it. So just as I said before, like this is known, this is too periodic. Uh, it's a uh, the homotopy group is just a formal power theory on one generator and uh, a polynomial uh, within on an inverted generator. So where degree u1 is zero, degree of u is minus two, and uh, the coefficients is some weight vector. Okay. So this is too periodic. It's, it's entirely null. Um, and uh, so first of all, like in this guy, I want to approximate the second layer, which plays the role of the image of J. So I can start with the first approximation, which is just taking the fixed point of 48. And notice in the whole group, in the Morales stabilizer group, there is a smaller one, uh, which you ignore the Galois part, which mainly just change the coefficients of the width vectors. Uh, so the key computation falls into the uh, group of the order 40, 24 inside. Uh, but maybe before uh, starting the computation, let me just uh, give some examples for motivations. Uh, so seeing this may be something reasonable to, to think about. Uh, first of all, like uh, this one tells you something non-trivial about the uh, uh, stable homotopy groups of sphere. Uh, like from the, so this is a real spectrum. So it's a received union map from the sphere to it. And you can ask uh, for which elements uh, like in the TMF can lift back to the sphere, gives you non-trivial elements in the sphere. And this is a question about the horizon image of it. Uh, so this one is completely settled down, uh, just like very recently, 2020, by uh, Barron's Mahoda and Quickly, but it started way earlier, and uh, maybe like Barron's here, Hopkins, Mahoda, and uh, even earlier. 
uh, and also uh, before, like also very recently, like Brunner Rognes has a has a book uh, using a different method, and uh, they determine the upper bound for the Hurwitz image. So, like in short, it gives a bunch of non-trivial element in the homotopy group of spheres, just like be before the table, from the uh, homology. Like now, you have infinite families of non-trivial elements in the group of homotopy groups of spheres, uh, which is great because as one maybe like one uh, application for this one, because these elements are only detected by TMF that. By the picture, it's coming from something on the second stage in here. So as a consequence, they all lies into the co-kernel of image G. They're not in the image of G. And uh, by a work by Kovea and Milner, they contribute to some exotic structures, smooth structures on sphere. Uh, so as a corollary, quick, just direct corollary of uh, Barron's Mahoda and Quickly's theorem, uh, they, they already show that like over half of the even dimensions, like there are more than one uh, smooth structures for those spheres. Okay. Uh, and uh, also another reason, uh, like from the point of finite resolution, uh, like this ENHG, uh, where the G is a finite subgroup, uh, there are the building blocks for the whole thing. So in particular, by the finite resolution, you see that the, the goal, which is uh, E2, HG2 with the whole group, the second layer, the localized sphere, uh, can be resolved in a way in terms of this fixed point of finite subgroup. So this may be the two quick motivations for the computation. And maybe now uh, let's do the computation and uh, so, let me just pull out the answer for it. So the E2 page is already known. So the E2 page is this guy. And uh, the next thing I want to upgrade into the module. So originally, the group is G24. And the first statement is, since I'm too local, and the three is co prime to two, this G24, the group is of the format it's a non-trivial extension by the quaternion group generated by the quaternion numbers, IJK, and uh, a group of cyclic of order three. So since I'm in the two local case, three is co prime to two. So mainly the computation reduced to the case for um, Q8 computation. In particular, be more precise, I can think of the map I have a subgroup Q8, so I can think of the restriction map, and as I can think of the transfer map. And uh, as I know, the composition is order of the index. It's the index of Q8 in 24, which is three, and uh, three is a unit in the two local world. So the composition is a weak equivalence. So just this going through it, and this one in the spiral sequence. So E2 page is a group homology. You still have the restriction and transfer. And the diagram commutes. As a consequence, the computation of the Q8 case is just three copies of the computation for 24, roughly. It splits off as a summon. So these two computations are the same. So we can work with the smaller group Q8. Uh, in the ones we only care about the Q8, uh, so the action uh, is given by the following. So this one is taken from a uh, appendix uh, towards K2 local more space by Anas Burgi and uh, who contributed to Hans Winter Hen. Uh, but maybe like the knowing the action is even earlier. The E2 page, the, co the group commodity computation is contributed to uh, his winner hand, but just knowing the actions going back to the model of elliptic curves. 
and maybe also see the TMF book and also see the computation of Tillman. So with all of this one, so this is, a, I know the module, I know the action, so it's a purely algebraic group cohomology computation. So let's assume we already done that one. So you end up with a very complicated picture. So this is a picture takes from Tillman, uh, and uh, so this uh, this special sequence is no longer like before, just like stop at the third page after D3. Like the longest differential uh, is this guy. There is a D23 here. So this is a D23. And, uh, and as you can imagine, uh, you have to compute page by page. And this last 23 page might be harder or like needs more geometric information. And, uh, and at least that's true, like maybe if I, if you go through the two months um, proof, like roughly the proof is the following. So maybe in the early stage, you know this D5, uh, like suppose you already proved this D5, and now this D23 follows from a multiplica multiplication structure. So the source are uh, connected by a line of slope one, which is, just multiply by eta, as we see in the KO case. And if you can show the target has a hidden eta extension, by which I mean there, like, or, although on the algebra level, if I times eta, I should just go up by one. And here, nothing is there, it's just trivial. But on the topological level, I can go very high to jump the filtration there is a hidden eta extension, and this is marked by the solid black line on the uh, 97. So this two will be, this hidden eta extension will imply there is also a hidden extension there, and that stretch the D5 into a very long differential, D23. But like the, in order to show that there is such a hidden extension, like you need to, interpret the elements in a total bracket, which has a six folds. And uh, uh, like for the total brackets, each fold you are going along, you're adding uh, some choice of the non homotopy So as you can imagine, you're from three fold to four fold and five fold and six fold. So there are tons of choice and uh, it's very complicated and very hard to keep track or prove. Yeah, so any questions? Okay, so yeah, so by this one, I mean this one, the computation needs a lot of like non-trivial topological information. Uh, however, uh, like in, in our, uh, in of our work uh, with Zhi Peng Duan, uh, Hana Jiakong, and uh, Yun Ze Lu, and Guo Zhen Mao, so we're computing E2 HQ8 using the home to be fixed points, but sequences, And uh, so in our computations, we can directly deduce the D23 differential from the E2 page. So it's a D5, D13, D23, all, all of them at the same time. Uh, and how do we do that one? This comes from the new equivalent method. So the new equivalent method gives structures so now I can think of this E2 spectrum as a Q8 spectrum with Q8 action. And in the equivalent world, you not only consider the Q8 group itself, but you also consider all the subgroups and they're related by structure maps. In particular, if I'm thinking the homotopy groups of E2 as a Q8 spectrum, the homotopy groups is no longer just like a Abelian groups, but it forms Mackey functors. So, which I mean, so I can think of the, just as before, you can think of the case for the C2 X on it. And uh, the C2 and the Q8 are related by, I can do the restriction map to the subgroup. And then I can do the transfer map. So they're related by all these structure maps. So knowing the information for the C2, We'll see informations about the QA computation. And uh, so 
For the C2 case, since the C2 has a model of complex conjugation, so this is uh, by who Krish, initialed by who Krish, uh, but later on uh, by Hopkins and Ravenel, and uh, like also uh, Jeremy Hand, Xiaolin Dan Shi, uh, showing that so with all this information, seeing, knowing the C2 action can be modeled by the complex conjugation, it gives the computations for all E N H C two. It's completely understood. In particular, uh, E two H C two is complete is understood, but this may be for E two H C two is known much earlier. But then, like the 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 good point is. Once you know all of them, from all this information, like uh, uh, a theorem uh, by Zhi Pengduan, uh, myself, and the Xiaolin Dan Yishi, which we read from here, we know this one, the computation stops at a certain page. The longest differential is known in this case. And uh, since they have the equivalent structure map, from knowing the information of the subgroup C2, I can use the structure map. In this case, I will use, uh, I need to use uh, more than the transfer and restriction. I need to use the uh, here Hopkins Ravenel multiplicative norm. And this one will give the upper bound for the differential lens on the larger group in particular. As a consequence, we figure out like all the upper bound for the longest differentials uh, in the computation for ENHG for all heights, all subgroups. Uh, in, the, in particular, for the case of height two Q8, before any computation, I automatically know there is a 23 is the longest differential. Moreover, and uh, there is a horizontal vanishing line. At 23, which I mean in the e infinity page, if you cut the pictures from 23, nothing will left, which you can see from this picture, like all the dots on this line or be beyond are all gray no black dots left over. Oh, and this is not special for high two and uh, Q8. It's, it, there's a particular number computed by the heights and the, the group. So, and the, what, what's cool about this one, if, if I just knowing this one from knowing the, from this equivalent information, and if I'm reading the E2 page, so this dot, this dot is beyond the line. So it has to vanish. And this one is actually kappa bar to the power six. So it's a permit cycle. Again, just like the eta to the power four has to be killed. This kappa bar to the six has to be killed because it's already beyond the vanishing line. And if I just check the next column, this is a DOS on E2 page, it's a ZMO8 here. And there are only three copies of ZMO2 next to it. In order to kill this one, I need all the ZMO2 supports our non-trivial differential to hit the target, to kill this ZMO8. So this automatically prove a D5, D13, D25 all at once by just knowing the E2 page information without any topological information goes in. Once you accept the uh, equivalent method, and you can using the norm in this way. In the, like even uh, maybe more exciting is like using this way, you can deduce all the differentials using the vanishing line and the restrictions uh, and the transfers, you can prove all the differentials. Uh, and there's also like a hidden two extension, but this one is also going from, you can prove this two, this times two hidden extension 
it's a uh, your first restriction and then you transfer back. So that's a two. And it reduced to, to a proof of the exotic restriction, exotic transfer map, which is already seen in the C4 case. So everything deduced just knowing the transfer restriction and uh, with the norm, but but unfortunately in the Q8 case, we don't have the slice battle sequence as here Hopkins revenue developed. So, but we can still like replace it by the new result of the vanishing line. So with the vanishing line, which is essentially the norm and using the transfer and restriction now for the Q8 case, without knowing the slices, I can go back to the home to be fixed points but sequences. And I can compute it, all of them based on knowing the computation for the C4 case. It deduced for the C8 case. And uh, just a quick remark, the C4 case has been worked out by uh, Hill Hopkins Revenue in another paper, like the analog of the uh, cave, uh, the C4 analog of the uh, detection ser serum showing that the C4 case can be deduced from the C2 case, which is entirely known. So in this sense, it's give a very algebra proof. And then like, then you may wonder, okay, this is a, this may be like uh, surprising because originally there's a many party information and how can I avoid all of them? Uh, so maybe then uh, let me took a, in the, in the last few minutes, uh, but since I already pre-written them, so maybe let's see how much I can cover. So the other method is from the motivic one. So it's trying to explain, like maybe really the computation can be encoded by the algebra structure. Uh, so from the motivic computation, uh, like now we we can work with the connective version of the topological model forms, uh, which can be defined by the feature to commodity is a model model a two, which a is the uh, single the algebra. So it's a certain uh, you know the algebra module, and uh, so there are motivic version uh, invented by Bogdan, Dan Askson, and uh, uh, Akim Cross and uh, Nicholas Rika, and with a similar feature, and the Dan Askson compute the Adam's spiral sequence for this mot uh, motivic one uh, early back to the two thousand nine, but the well, new product I want to advertise. Uh, it's a you know, joint work with Isaacson, uh, Hannah, uh, Kong, Hannah Jia Kong, and uh, Yang Yao Ren, and uh, He Yi Zhu. So we compute the Adams Novikov spectral sequences for this topological module, for the motivic, for the same motivic module forms. And by a rigid theorem by Dan Isaacson, the Adams Novikov spectral sequence is just a top box Dan spectral sequences. Or like it can be more precise, but due to time, let me just say the punchline is the classical Adams spiral sequences determines the motivic one and the vice versa. They're basically the same information. And knowing the motivic homotopy groups by, remi by remembering the power of tau, like you're exactly remembering all the differentials happening in the Adams Nyakov spiral sequences. So it's the uh, same computation as I presented before, um, but here in the motivic case, uh, we use the following idea. So the hope is trying to say, okay, in the previous case, using the algebra, using the equivalent algebra structure, I somehow can deduce all the differentials. In some sense, they're all algebraic. Uh, can I deduce this algebraic information in another way? And uh, in this case, we deduce them by knowing the E2 page information, but not, not only for the Adams Novikov one. You also need the E2 information for the Adams spectral sequences. So you combine the E2, field, E2 information for both of them, you treat them algebraically, and then you can deduce like almost all the differentials. Um, but in this case, we are allowed to use the total brackets um, but we restrict ourselves, all the total brackets are actually coming from uh, Macy products, which is again defined on the E2 page. And uh, all of them, before knowing any differentials, you can prove these Macy products. And by the more theorem, you check by degree reasons, you can show the total brackets. So in this sense, there are some somehow still algebraic in some sense. So the, really the key point, the new information for the motivic one, what, because all of 
all the above I said can do can be done in the classical case. You still have atoms. You still have atoms circle. What's cool about the motivate um, is the Zhou Li Xu, Guo Zhenwang, and uh, uh, Bogdan. They show a theorem. They're showing that the motivic Adams model sequence of cofibro tau is as morphic to the algebraic Novikov spectral sequences, which allows you, gives you a way to trans, trans, uh, to go forward and back forward between the two spectral sequences in a rigorous way. And this is also like how they uh, got the breakthrough for the computation for the stable homotopy group of spheres. Because uh, they can pull the information of the algebraic Novikov spectral sequences, the algebraic differentials, back into the geometric side on the Adam spectral sequences. And here, um, what we did is we assume both E2 page and uh, consider this cofiber of tau method, but smash with the uh, topological modular forms, the same motif of origin. Uh, this allow us to go back between the elements on the E2 page and the E infinity page between the Adam's spiral sequence and the, the Adam's Novikov spiral sequences. So just as a, maybe as an example to say, so think about the case of KO. We just see the Adam's Novikov computation. There is a non-trivial D3. But as I said, if you compute the Adam's spiral sequence, eta to the power uh, three is already zero in the E2 page. This D3, the E2 page just collapse. So if you can correspond the elements between these two spectral sequences, you will know the D3 for free by knowing the E2 page information of the Adam spectral sequences. Uh, and this can be done rigorously. Uh, so you translate the elements uh, back forward, and then you can deduce most of the differential. And the even more, a little bit, another cool part of this statement is knowing this one, you can trans back forward. And uh, so this one allows you, there is a boundary map Q here. And this one can identify elements, can define elements in a more powerful way. So you can define elements originally, which is torsion in the spectral sequence. By the boundary map, it shifts them by one. Could be something torsion free and then you know the coefficients because in the spectral sequence, it's very hard to know the co like every if it's two tor if it is four torsion, then it's very hard to determine whether it's one or three. Because both one and three are unit. When you compute differentials, everything's up to unit. You basically lost the track of the sign. But by the cofiber of tau master, you can pull back to something which is not Z more four, which is a copy of Z. You see the difference from one to three from the E2 page. And that allows us to determine a psi which is unsettled down before in the in the ring structure of the homotopy groups of the topological model forms at the prime two. Yeah, and maybe that's all I wanna see. Uh, sorry, like I, I'm rushing like in the last part. And uh, yeah, thanks for your patience. Yeah, thank you very much. Interesting. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for the very interesting talk. Any questions? So uh, one thing to ask is, is can you get the use the same types of techniques to get any computational information, say I mean higher chromatic heights or uh, yeah, that's a very good question. So uh, the question is asking, this is a computation for the topological model forms, which is known before. So it would be more exciting to do the computation in higher heights. Uh, and the answer is yes. And the, for example, the equivalent method, uh, like first of all, just as I said, uh, it's already like has been done for all heights for the C2 group. And uh, with the same philosophy, you can, control the finite group from the C2 version. And this has been achieved in the case for height four and uh, uh, with the group is C4 completely in the integer graded part by Hill, uh, 
呃，丹尼肖林石，肖林丹尼石 ，and the 国珍毛 ，and 周立徐 ，and maybe more remarkable is at height four with the group C eight is now completely known, but with the partial information using the equivalent method to figure out like the E first. With the C8 fixed point is essentially the detection theorem in the Hill Hopkins Ravenel in their solutions for the uh, Kovar inverted one, and uh, that's a computation can be done in higher heights. And the partial information is already powerful enough to tell you that the Kovar invariance element for uh, like except the 126, like all the higher ones do not exist. Thank you. Other questions from our Zoom participants or from here, from the physically present people. Any, any more questions? Well, if, if there are no more questions, let's. Thank Guchuan Li for a very powerful talk, a very impressive talk. Computations are really impressive. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you for your patience to go through a very computational talk. <laughs> yeah. I guess with that we wrap things for the day. Yeah. So much. Yeah. Thanks Thank for you. coming in virtually. Are you Are you going to be? Also Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I, I missed the last sentence. Oh, I was just checking. Are you going there. to Chicago next week? Uh, yeah, I'm going to Northwestern. Yeah, like oh. for the conference. Right? Yeah, Yeah, because so my Paul is my advisor. So yeah, I know. so he's retired. <laughs> so there's no reason if I'm within a distance of five hours drive. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's fair. Okay. Yeah, and yeah. I'm also looking forward to the conference because uh, there are so many participants and it looks very exciting, like all the talks and the participants. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, so Certainly maybe, this uh, department agrees. Some uh, six of us are going as well. Okay, great. Yeah. So see you guys there. Okay. Yeah, see you there. Yeah, bye.